Hey everybody, this is Mike from Land and Custom Classics. Um, got a little video coming to you. This is the major upgrade we've been waiting for on my 68 Thunderbird here with the Thunderjet 429. Before we start, I'm going to do a little video or a little bit on uh, what comes with your carburetor and some things you need to take into consideration. Which I knew about, I've read about it and all that. I've been watching videos about this since it was coming out. Uh, my friend Riley's Rebuilds, she goes over a lot of Edelbrock stuff. And I actually bought this on her page. I have my link I've put out on that. I'll have her in the description also. So this uh, little linkage here, uh, how to kick your four barrels, how soon they kick in. Um, on your Hollies. They uh, have a tool that clicks, clips on here, and it has a thing that pushes down to bend that. So you can time it how you want, and I'm sure you can do that to some extent on these. <clears throat> but it comes with this one on. Then this is the longer one. Makes them kick in later. That's for, like, your grandma. This one here that comes on it kicks in about half throttle. And then you got this one which is a little bit longer and it already has a bend in it so you could use this one to bend or whatever or you could even bend that one if you wanted to uh, make your four barrels kick in when you want the one thing i was kind of disappointed in came with the big thing of edelbrock stickers come with the top gasket the bottom gasket and a stud um, Barrows said that his AVS-2 came with the little balls that screw on there for, uh, for your throttle. And then sometimes you have to buy a special kit for your kick down on your transmission, especially like on these C6s and C4s that my Thunderbirds have. But I've already converted mine and I have a cable kit that will just go in one of these two holes. And then you can adjust the cable and use an Allen to tighten it. But the biggest thing with the new VRS 4150, if you don't read the details right, you can be in trouble. Because this is going to be <laughs> in the title of my video, I'm sure. This is the inch that will kill you. They've upgraded this carburetor. They've put baffles in it. I'll do a video to uh, Unity Motorsports. He just went through the factory, watched them build these. This is like the holy grail of carburetors. It's the best there is. But there's a few little things, and one of the major ones is it's an inch taller than your Hollies and a lot of your Edelbrocks and all that. So that there on some projects is the inch that will kill you. I didn't even do any pre-measuring with this because this car, I paid less for this car than I paid for this carburetor. I paid $800 for the car with tax. I think this was around $850. Put a $200 air cleaner on there, you're up to about $1,100. So <clears throat> before you order a carb, especially on a sports car, which this was actually... Ford's luxury sports car and the hood goes down at such an angle that they even built special mounts to hook up your air conditioning pump and that because with the regular mounts it sits up here and your hood couldn't close so things are tight on a on a sporty car we're going to take this off for right now set it aside so what we're going to do, we're going to measure this from the bottom of the, the, on the intake here, up to where the uh, air cleaner sits is about four and seven eighths. And that's with a one inch spacer under it. On here, to where the intake sits, or the air cleaner sits, is three and seven eighths. Now let's just measure the car body here. So we got about an inch to inch to play with there. Yeah, this one is oh three and a quarter. So like I say, that carb's three and a quarter. This carb is three and seven eighths. 
So we got a bit of little bit of play there, and I don't know how tall my air cleaner is yet. Here I am spilling my parts all over. Because another thing you gotta watch out for, I ordered a really nice Edelbrock air cleaner off Amazon. One thing Amazon is notorious about, which really sucks if you're a car builder, Amazon doesn't put dimensions in for items much. There's so many car things and stuff like that. You can get on Amazon for great deals, but there are no dimensions. The only dimension I found on the air cleaner is that it's a three inch thick filter instead of your standard two inch thick filter. That's all I got to go on. So <clears throat> I ordered, well, I went and bought this performance carburetor piece here from Edelbrock cost me like 39 bucks it says it's for Holly demon quick fuel all that stuff compatible <clears throat> but I have a one inch spacer on there right now and this isn't much more than like a quarter of an inch see here if we can get her yeah it's a quarter of an inch so that gives us an extra three quarters of an inch to play with but my thing is with this, if it doesn't fit, we're just going to cut a hole and put a freaking scoop on it. So if you're working on a little sports car or some project of yours that you want to keep looking original, you got to make sure you have clearance. One way of doing it, I'm going to put this air cleaner back on here. You can set your air cleaner on here or even measure it from where it sits on the car because I had to put a lifter deal on here to uh, make that fit. That's about three quarters of an inch plus from where it goes on here. We'll look at the bottom where it seats. About even with this piece here, so we're at three quarters and about three inches, we'll say. So, three and three quarters inches for air cleaner height, plus this height, which is about five inches. So, you're looking at about eight inches you're sticking under the hood here. And I know uh, Cousin Kim did a deal where he stuck his phone under here with the video on or whatever. And it kind of showed how far down that his uh, thing went. What we're going to do, we're going to set the air cleaner on here. And I'm probably not going to be able to post this part on the video. I'm going to do it to the side here. I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. <clears throat> There's a lot of ways to do it. He just hit record, close the hood, whatever. I'm going to have to turn my camera off. I'm going to do it a little more high tech than Cousin Kim because he's, he's afraid of technology. Working a camera, doing YouTube videos is about as far as he goes. I'm going to find a nice spot that I can put this GoPro, okay, where I can see, and it's going to be clear. Then I'm going to go to my GoPro app on my phone, and I'm going to put my little my little shotgun light here, little LED light. I'm going to put it probably up on top of here, and then we'll be able to see that light on the phone app in the video. I might try to screenshot that and put it in. So we'll cut you guys off here and it'll pick right back up, possibly with the GoPro footage, if I can get that. So stay tuned, everybody. And if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out as creators. Okay, now here's another method for you guys. Looks like it's getting dark. We might have to finish this one tomorrow. What if you don't have a GoPro or anything like that? What if you don't want to set your phone on top of that, close the hood down, and possibly smash your screen and cost you hundreds of dollars? Let's set a soda can on there. 
it's not going to hurt this old old air cleaner much, but we'll see how much it scrunches it down or if it even touches it. Here we go. Feels like we scrunched it a little. <clears throat> there you go. Dented the can in. That much. So where the where the indents are on the can, looks like we got do my tape measure up here somewhere. Yeah, I'll find it. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So then we measure that scrunch in the can. We got about one and three quarter inches to play with. There you go. There for those of you that don't have any fanciness, we'll just do that. So like I say, we got a good bit of room here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this off. And I'm sure you guys probably know how to undo a bolt and a clamp. So I'm going to take out all the off all the nuts and pop this little throttle linkage off with the ball. Literally all you need is like a screwdriver or something. We always use the knife. Put it in there, boom, popped off. My lower one, it has a ball also. Well, it's not a ball. It's kind of a little plate type one that my throttle or my transmission linkage hooks to. So I'll undo that one. Unbolt this. I'm going to take some of this fuel stuff off. Bend her around a little bit. We'll be right back with you. Okay, so other things I'm going to need for this build. Got my gaskets here. I got... Uh, my little piece here that's going to set on top of there. Ta-da! I'm going to put that baby down there on the bottom. Okay. Put that sucker on there. Ah, come on, get down there. There we go. Okay. I got a Spectre. These fuel filters for hot rods with the glass. You can take them apart, clean them, put new elements in them, whatever. I use these ones from O'Reilly's because they're better. They got the fuel nipples cast into them and everything. Well, the problem I was having, nobody carries a union to go from my 5 16 I believe, gas line on my car right here to a 3 8 which hooks to my carburetor. So this actually comes with a whole pack of different size nipples you can screw on. So... That'll get us up to our 3 8 and then I bought a little thing of 3 8 hose here. So, we're going to get these out and unwrapped here. Okay, one thing I'm going to do real quick, because I totally forgot about it till now. I forgot to grab my vice grips. That's my favorite way of doing it. These studs here are way too tall, and it come with a set with this spacer which we have a gasket on each side of. So, I see there's the old one inch spacer and the old Carter carb. So I'm gonna get some vice grips and twist these out, put the new ones in real fast. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I don't know, I didn't show this on the side here. These are AN fittings. A lot of people don't really use AN fittings. They're kind of, kind of high end, cool looking deal. Um, this has got a 3 8 fuel hose on here. We're going to set this on here. And, oh, I already took off the caps. This is your uh, brake vacuum. And then I got the outside port pulled here. The outside is for your old cars. It's full vacuum. The time one is for your newer cars with, like, emissions and crap. So pretty much if you have an old car, you hook it to this one. I don't care what people say. Read the destructions. <laughs> These guys, Edelbrock, they've done a little bit of research on this, and they have a little more money than most people that sit in their garage and go, oh, well, I made mine run better with this one. Well, you're doing something wrong. So I'm going to hook these ports up because they're kind of a bugger to get into once it's on because we're putting this sucker so close and down on here. Okay, now another huge thing you want to do while you're doing this, make sure everything sits nice and tight because that's one big thing Hollies are doing now. 
They got all these things manufacturing like crazy. They're popping them out. And uh, Irish Outlaw, Jay from Irish Outlaw Garage, he got three of them. I believe it was for his Ranchero. Tried three different ones. Oh, getting ahead of myself. Give me one second here. I forgot to put a linkage adapter deal in here. So, anyway, Jay, he got, like... He exchanged a holly three times. He got three different carburetors, put them on there. The base was warped, wouldn't fit the manifold. So he couldn't get a, a good seal. <clears throat> so he ended up putting an Edelbrock on it. His uh, holly carburetor was warped. But yeah, I had to put the little little linkage on the bottom of the throttle deal there. I'm going to check it. Major thing, huge rule in carburetors, always make sure there is nothing in the way of any linkage because linkages are how carburetors operate. <clears throat> if you uh, have something in the way of any linkage, you'll never run right because all the linkages have to be able to move properly to do their job. So my throttle linkage here, check that. I got this piece here. This is my kick down for my transmission. I have a C6. You want to get this on here properly. <clears throat> that little bugger, it clips on there hard. And then your little ball, you got that in the right hole I want. I have another piece here that comes up with a linkage. And I'm going to have to get a piece off my old uh, Mercury. I'm going to try to make this work and have cruise control because it's factory. But the module's blown out back there. I'm going to try to put cruise control on it. But anyway, just tighten these bolts down. Work your way around. Okay. Get them all nice and snugged up on there. It's got pretty good room to get around here. They are longer front and back than a AFB. The AFB sticks more out the sides. These are front to back style. I think the AFB will still be the better street carburetor. This is a street and strip carburetor, which you have some disadvantages of. And any of the technical stuff you want to know about this baby. Uh, you can ask, or you can watch Barrow's Garage's video. He's my cousin. He knows a lot about Holly, and I took this over. He did a video before I got ready to put it on. So I'm going to wait till after his airs to run this video. Uh, um, right here, got to cut a little hose off. I got some of the, I got this filter put down here to get things prepped. I just guesstimated on this hose. That's about an inch and a half too long there. But I'm probably going to cut the hoses, redo it later to where the filter sits next to the coil kind of more. And uh, out of the way here. But yeah, you just want to you want to check every little part. Make sure you have good clearances. And get this on there plenty. I'm gonna get my flathead screwdriver loosen this clamp a little. I'm gonna get this all the way on the carb fitting. You got a good seal. Don't want gas coming out and catching you on fire here. Waking up on fire sucks. I actually rerouted the coil wire because the coil wire was hitting in the way of my linkage. Like I say, make sure your linkages are all clear. Nothing will snag up. So, then for tonight, we're just going to throw the regular air cleaner on here. Check her out there. I think it should be pretty close to what I'm getting in the mail. i close this all up here. Because, let's see. Got a stud with my new carb here. We'll see if it'll fit through the factory air cleaner put that in there 
don't drop anything down your carburetor. It's a headache. You have to chase it out. And you may have to do some work on your engine. Grab this and set her on here for today. Okay. Hopefully, like tomorrow, my new one's supposed to be here. Uh, yeah, it's too low. No, no, it'll work. Just right. Perfect. Perfecto. But the nut is too big. We can probably spin it on there. Screw the air cleaner on. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave that off and do our first start here. So we want to be able to get the carburetor. Presto, chinjo, there you go. Anyway, that'll work to keep it covered and out of the weather. So we get our new air cleaner. Let's hop inside. Get a little fuel to this monkey. See what she does. Hopefully my battery's good. <laughs> okay. Fire in the hole, right? It'll take a minute to get everything full of fuel here. Hold on. May have to give it a little bump of starting fluid. Let's see what our filter's doing here. Like I say, this also has nice sight glasses. Okay, we should have fuel. Let me tighten the connection there. Hold on one minute. <laughs> so I'm going to have to redo some stuff a little better. I just realized I knocked this little hot wire cap off my uh, coil. Let's hit her. Oh, not ready yet. It's cold anyway, so and this has no choke. I believe I've seen pictures of one that did have a choke. Okay, I gotta put my spring back on there. I got a spring that was hooked down here with the uh, transmission stuff here. I'm gonna hook that back up behind here. Okay. Okay. Um. You're looking pretty good. We'll probably do the fine tuning tomorrow. I gotta look here. I got a little spot dripping. Thing. No, I think that was all, all from uh, before I tightened the fitting. Looks like it. So, get my little flashlight out here. But like you say, there's a cool little install there on uh, your VRS 4150. It might be this one fitting here still a little bit. Okay, so I fixed my fuel leak that I had over here on the uh, AN fitting kit that I got off eBay. I tightened everything but one thing on the back side of the T. There's a little uh, Allen you can pull out and uh, put a pressure gauge in it. I didn't check that and I pulled it out with my fingers, so I tightened that up. No more fuel leaks. So. Now I just got to get all that fuel off my intake. <laughs> if I warm it up, it'll probably boil off. <laughs> anyway, she runs like a top. I haven't touched any settings yet. I have to warm it up, and then I'll have to get the pressure gauge and hook up there and tune it to optimum vacuum. So 
I say she kicks in she's running nice and smooth and now it's warmed up a little see it's a double pumper and then the annulars are sitting clear up here really cool when you hit it you can actually see the vacuum suck it down those venturis are built a whole lot better but like they say uh if you watch uh, Barrow's Garage's video that he's coming out with, it'll tell you more of the specifics and do all the Holly comparisons. So, thanks everybody for tuning in and sticking with me. Almost dark now. There's snow out here. Everybody knows I work outside. I don't care. And uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. So, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Glad to have you with me for all my awesome performance upgrades on this car. So. We'll uh, do some awesome test driving tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.